A function is with many numbers generating functions. As Herb Wolf said, a generating function of a sequence is a closed line on which you hang all elements of the sequence. That single closed line contains all elements of the sequence and all information about them. This great idea, that is to comprise data given up by infinitely many numbers into a single function, leads to what is arguably, arguably the most powerful tool in enumerative combinatorics, namely to the technique of generating functions. Ordinary generating functions, recurrence relations and generating functions. The frog population of a lake grows fourfold each year. On the first day of each year, 100 frogs are taken out of the lake and shipped into another lake. Assuming that there were 50 frogs in the lake originally, how many frogs will be in the lake in 20 years? in 30 years, in 100 years, in n years. The difficulty here does not lie in finding some kind of an answer. It is very easy to find a recursive answer. Indeed, if AI denotes the number of frogs at the end of uh, the ith year, so that A0 is equal to 50, A1 is equal to 4 times 50 minus 100, which is equal to 100, A2 is equal to 4 times 100 minus 100, which is equal to 300, and so on, then it is not difficult to prove that a n plus 1 is equal to 4 times a n minus 100 if n is greater than or equal to 0. In the computer age, such an answer is very useful as we can go ahead and compute the values of a n for all n as long as the memory of our computer lasts. There is, however, a tremendous waste in this method. Assume we are only interested in the number of frogs after 87 years then, using the formula a n plus 1, which is equal to 4 times a n minus 100, we would have to compute the values of a1, a2, and so on to a86. In order to be able to compute a87 at the end, so we would have to compute 86 values in which we were not interested in. To avoid such a waste of time and energy, it is best to find an explicit formula for a n. That is, we would like to deduce a formula for a n that does not contain a n minus 1, or any other elements of the sequence, a formula that depends only on n and is therefore directly computable. All we have to work with is the equation a n plus 1, which is equal to 4 times a n minus 100, and uh, the initial condition a 0 is equal to 50. This seems to be pre uh, precise. This seems to be precious little at first sight. However, a point one, this formula a n plus 1, which is equal to 4 times a n minus 100, holds for all non-negative values of n. So we, in fact, have infinitely many equations in infinitely many variables. To collect all the information scattered in these infinitely many equations into just one equation, we will introduce uh, the technique of generating functions. Definition 8.1, let f embraces uh, with uh, n greater than or equals to 0 be a sequence of uh, real numbers. Then the formal power series f of x, which is equal to the summations of f n times x to the n summing for all indexes n, which is greater than or equals to 0, is uh, called the ordinary generating function of the sequence f embraces. Uh, with n which is greater than or equals to 0. As uh, this section discusses ordinary generating functions only, we will sometimes omit the word ordinary for shortness. In what follows, we will manipulate a point 1 so that the ordinary generating function of the sequence a embraces appears. To that end, let us uh, multiply both sides of a point 1 by x to the n plus 1, then sum over all n which is greater than or equals to 0. This may well be a new operation for the reader, and it is crucial for the rest of this chapter, so we repeat it one more time. Take a copy of a.1 for each non-negative integer n. Multiply both sides by x to the n plus 1, and then take the sum of the infinitely many equations obtained. We get the following formula. The summations of a n plus 1 times 
x to the n plus 1, summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, such as summations, is equal to the summations of 4 times a n times x to the n plus 1, summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, minus the summations of 100 times x to the n plus 1, summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 0. The left-hand side is almost the generating function g of x of uh, the sequence a embraces with n which is greater than or equals to 0. Indeed, after replacing n plus 1 by n, the only missing term is a0. So the left-hand side of a point 2 is g of x minus a0. The first term of the right-hand side is uh, 4x times g of x while the second term of the right-hand side is 100x divided by 1 minus x by elementary calculus. So a point 2 is equivalent to g of x minus a0, which is equal to 4x g of x minus 100x divided by 1 minus x. We have uh, completed our first task. We compressed uh, the information given by the infinitely many equations of the type a n plus 1, which is equal to 4 times a n minus 100, into just one equation. The reader may think something along these lines big deal. True, the number of equations is only one, but that one equation contains the function g of x, which has infinitely many terms, and is a weird thing anyway. So where is the great progress? We cannot blame the reader for such thoughts at this point. They are quite natural. She will shortly see, however, that equation 8.3 is very useful, mainly because g of x is not just any function. It is a formal power series. The reader has probably met power series before when she studied the calculus. We should explain, however, what we mean by formal power series. By definition, a formal power series is an expression of the form the summations of vn times x to the n summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, where the vi are real numbers. Thus, formal power series are defined by their coefficients and are not necessarily equal to the Taylor series of some function. For example, the formal power series, the summations of uh, n factorial times x to the n summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, is not equal to the Taylor series of any function as it is not convergent for any x which is not equal to 0. Rearranging a point 3, we will get g of x is equal to a0 divided by 1 minus 4x minus 100x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x. Remember that a0 is equal to 50, so the right-hand side does not contain any unknowns. In other words, it is a formal power series in x. Therefore, we have obtained an explicit formula for g of x, the generating function of the sequence a embraces. Finally, we want to obtain an explicit formula for the numbers a n themselves. Note that a point 4 is an equation of formal power series, and the two formal power series are equal, if and only if for all n the coefficient of x to the n is the same in both of them. The coefficient of x to the n in g of x, so on the left-hand side of uh, a point 4, is a n by definition. Therefore, in the formal power series on uh, the right-hand side of a point 4, the coefficient of x to the n is also a n. On the other hand, we can also compute this coefficient as uh, the sum of the coefficients of x to the n in the two members of the right-hand side. The first term is easier. Indeed, a0 divided by 1 minus 4x, which is equal to 50 times the summations of 
for x to the n summing for o n, which is greater than or equals to 0, which is equals to the summations of uh, okay, 50 times the summations of 4 to the n times x to the n summing for o n, which is greater than or equals to 0. So in the first term of the right-hand side, the coefficient of x to the n is 50 times 4 to the n. The second term is a little bit more complicated. The death term is 100x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x, which is equals to 100x times the summations of x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equals to 0. This one corresponding to the 1 minus x in the denominator and uh, another term is the summations of 4 to the n times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equals to 0. This term corresponding to uh, the 1 minus 4x in the denominator. So the constant, the coefficient of x to the 0 is 0 in this term. And if n is greater than or equals to 1, then we have to find the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 in the product, the summations of uh, x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equals to 0, times the summations of 4 to the n times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equals to 0. This, that is, uh, finding the coefficient of a n in a product is something we will have to do very often while using generating functions. There are two ways to do this. We will show one now and the, the other one after the completion of this solution. The method that we show now is that of uh, partial fractions, which the reader may have well seen before in the calculus or differential equations class. Let us uh, try to find the constants a and b, so that a divided by 1 minus x plus b divided by 1 minus 4x is equal to 100x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x. Multiplying both sides by 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x yields a times 1 minus 4x plus b times 1 minus x, which is equal to 100x. And after some manipulation, that will be minus b minus 4a times x plus a plus b, which is equal to 100x. The polynomial on the left-hand side will be equal to the polynomial on the right-hand side if the coefficients of the two linear terms are the same and the two constants are the same. That is, uh, minus b minus 4a is equal to 100 and uh, a plus b is equal to 0. Solving this system, we get that a is equal to 100 divided by 3, and b is equal to minus 100 divided by 3. Therefore, 100x divided by y minus 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x is equal to 100 divided by 3 times 1 over 1 minus 4x minus 100 divided by 3 times 1 over 1 minus x which is equal to, if we take out the constant 100 divided by 3, that will be 100 divided by 3 times the summations of a 4 to the n times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0, minus the summations of x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0, which is equal to the summations of 4 to the n minus 1 times x to the n times 100 divided by 3, summing for all n, which is, is greater than or equal to 0. Now that we have computed both terms on the right-hand side of uh, 8.3, we can conclude that the coefficient of uh, x to the n there, and thus the left-hand side of 8.3, is a n, which is equal to 50 times 4 to the n minus 100 times, 4 to the n minus 1 divided by 3. We have uh, completed uh, our task. That is, uh, we have found an explicit formula for a n. 
it is easy to check that 8.5 is indeed the correct formula. Substituting n equals to 0, we indeed get a 0 equals to 50. Moreover, for a n minus 100 is equals to 4 times 50 times 4 to the n minus 100 times 4 to the n minus 1 divided by 3, then minus 100, which is equals to 50 times 4 to the n plus 1 minus 100 times 4 to the n plus 1 minus 4 divided by 3, then minus 100, which is equals to 50 times 4 to the n plus 1 minus 100 times 4 to the n plus 1 minus 1 divided by 3. So the sequence of numbers given by our f explicit formula satisfies the recurrence relation. Let us uh, summarize the technique we have just uh, learned to turn recursive formulae into explicit ones. One, define uh, the ordinary generating function g of x of the sequence a n phrases with n which is greater than or equal to zero. Two, transform the recursive formula into an equation in g of x. This can usually be done by multiplying both sides of the recursion by x to the n or x to the n plus 1, sometimes x to the n plus k, and uh, summing for all non-negative n. 3. Solve for g of x. 4. Find uh, the coefficient of x to the n in g of x. As uh, this coefficient is a n, this will prove an explicit formula for a n. Remarks 1. Here is an alternative way of handling the expression. 100x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x, which is equal to 100x times the summations of x to the n, summing for n, o n, which is greater than or equal to 0, times the summations of 4 to the n times x to the n, summing for o n, which is greater than or equal to 0. There are many ways we can get a term in our product. The summations of uh, x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0, times the summations of uh, 4 to the n times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0, in which the exponent of x is n minus 1. We are interested in that coefficient because when we multiply the summations of 4 to the n times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0, by 100x, this coefficient will turn into the coefficient of x to the n. We can take 1 from the first sum and multiply it by 4 to the n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 from the second sum. Or we could take x from the first sum and multiply it by 4 to the n minus 2 times x to the n minus 2 from the second sum. In general, if i is such that 0, which is less than or equals to i, less than or equals to n minus 1, we can take x to the i from the first sum and multiply it by 4 to the n minus 1 minus i times x to the n minus 1 minus i from the second sum, getting the term 4 to the n minus 1 minus i times x to the n minus 1. There are no other ways to get x to the n minus 1 in our product, as uh, the coefficients of x are non-negative in both sums. So the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 in the summations of uh, x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equals to 0, times the summations of 4 to the n times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equals to 0, is 4 to the n minus 1 plus 4 to the n minus 2 plus 4 to the n minus 3, and so on, plus 4, plus 1, which is equal to 4 to the n minus 1, divided by 4 minus 1, which is equal to 4 to the n minus 1, divided by 3. Therefore, the coefficient of x to the n in 100x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x is 100 times 4 to the n minus 1 divided by 3 agreeing with our previous computation. 
Two, there are several software packages that can compute the partial fraction decomposition of 100x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x. For instance, in Maple, we can simply type convert 100x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 4x power frac x to obtain the, the desired decomposition. Let us uh, practice uh, the technique of generating functions with another example. Example 8.2. We have uh, invested $1,000 into a savings account that pays 5% interest at the end of each year. At the beginning of each year, we deposit another $500 into this account. How much money will be in this account after n years? Solution. It is again very easy to find a recurrence relation. Let A M be the account balance after n years. Then A zero is equal to one thousand, and A M plus one is equal to one point zero five times A M plus five hundred. Let us uh, go through the steps of our strategy one by one. One. Let g of x is equal to the summations of A N times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than equal to zero b, the generating function of the sequence, a embraces with n which is greater than or equal to 0. 2. Multiplying both sides of a recurrence relation by x to the n and uh, summing over all non-negative n, we get the summations of a n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. Summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, which is equal to the summations of 1.05 times x uh, times a n times x to the n plus 1, summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, plus the summations of 500 times x to the n plus 1, summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0. Here, the left hand side is uh, clearly g of x minus a 0, while the first term of the right hand side is 100. Uh, 1.05x times g of x. And uh, the second term of uh, the right hand side is simply 500x divided by 1 minus x. So 8.6 is equivalent to g of x minus a0, which is equal to 1.05x times g of x minus. 500x divided by 1 minus x. 3. Therefore, g of x is equal to 1000 divided by 1 minus 1.05x minus 500x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 1.05x. 1 4. To find a n, it uh, suffices to find uh, the coefficient of x to the n on the right hand side which is the sum of the coefficient of x to the n in the first term and the, the coefficient of x to the n in the second term. Note that 1000 divided by 1 minus 1.05x, which is equal to 1000, if we take the constant out of it, times the summations of 1.05 to the n times x to the n, summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0. So the coefficient of x to the n in the first term is 1000 times 1 1.05 to the n. For the second term, note that 500x divided by 1 minus x times 1 minus 1 1.05x, which is equal to 500x times the summations of x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0 times the summations of 1.05 to the n times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0, in order to find the coefficient of x to the n in this expression. We will now use uh, the alternative method shown in the remarks after the previous example. If the reader is less than certain that he could apply the method of partial fractions here, 
we encourage uh, the reader to try that method and uh, compare his result to ours. Note that to find the coefficient of x to the n in such a formula, it uh, suffices to find the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 in the summations of uh, xn summing for on, which is greater than or equal to 0, times the summations of 1.05 to the n times x to the n summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0. In this product, we will get a term with the exponent n minus 1, even only if we take x to the i from the first sum, and 1.05 to the n minus 1 minus i times x to the n minus 1 minus i from the second sum for some i, so that 0, which is less than or equal to i, less than or equal to n minus 1. Because then, the coefficients of x will add up to n minus 1 as needed. Therefore, the coefficient of x to the n in the second term of the right hand side of uh, 8.7 is 500 times the summations of uh, 1.05 to the i, summing with index i starting from 0 to n minus 1, which is equal to 500 times. 1.05 to the n minus 1 divided by 1.05 minus 1, which is equal to 10,000 times 1.05 to the n minus 1. Therefore, the coefficient of uh, x to the n on the right hand side, and therefore the left hand side of uh, 8.7 is. A n is equal to 1,000 times 1.05 to the n plus 10,000 times 1.05 to the n minus 1, which is equal to 1.05 to the n times 11,000 minus 10,000. The following example shows how we could use uh, the technique of uh, generating functions to term a recurrence relation to an explicit formula if uh, the recurrence relation has more terms. Example 8.3, let a n plus 2 equals to 3 times a n plus 1 minus 2 a m if n is greater than or equals to 0, and let a 0 equals to 0, and let a 1 equals to 1. Find an explicit formula for a n. Solution, let g of x equals to the summations of a n times x to the n summing with the n which is equal to 0, which is greater than or equal to 0. Multiply both sides of the recurrence relation by x to the n plus 2, and uh, sum over all natural numbers n to get the summations of a n plus 2 times x to the n plus 2, summing with all n which is greater than or equal to 0, which is equals to 3 times the summations of a n plus 1 times x to the n plus 2, summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, minus 2 times the summations of a n times x to the n plus 2, summing for all n which is greater than or equal to 0, uh, which is equivalent to g of x minus x, which is equal to 3x times g of x minus 2x squared times g of x. Expression, expression g of x, we get g of x is equal to x divided by 1 minus 3x plus 2x squared. The denominator of the right-hand side is again a quadratic polynomial. Note that 1 minus 3x plus 2x squared is equal to x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. Therefore, we are going to find the real numbers a and b, so that g of x is equal to x divided by 1 minus 3x plus 2x squared, which is equal to a divided by x minus 1 plus b divided by 2x minus 1. After rearranging uh, the form, we get x equals to 
to a plus b times x minus a plus b. Two polynomials are the same if and only if their corresponding coefficients are the same. Therefore, it follows that 2a plus b is equal to 1, and a plus b is equal to 0. So a is equal to 1, and b is equal to minus 1. Consequently, 8.5 yields g of x is equal to x divided by 1 minus 3x plus 2x squared, which is equal to minus 1, divided by 1 minus x plus 1 divided by 1 minus 2x. Both terms on the right-hand side are very easy to expand now. So g of x is equal to minus the summations of x n, summing with the all n which is greater than or equal to 0, plus the summations of uh, 2 to the n times x to the n, summing with all n which is greater than or equal to 0. And if we do some manipulations of both summation, we will get the summations of 2 to the n minus 1 times x to the n, summing for all n, which is greater than or equal to 0. And therefore, an is equal to 2 to the n minus 1.